In this video, let's go over the benefits and effects of meshing a region while doing an analysis in FreeCAD. This surprised me when I learned that FreeCAD was uh, able to do this. It's a very, very advanced thing, and it's very, very useful. I, I'll show some uh, footage here, hopefully I'll remember to edit it in, <laughs> of uh, doing a quick meshing analysis in SolidWorks. This was a video to help improve the performance of SOLIDWORKS and the findings are uh, meshes and meshing related processing is really exponential in scale. This should not be a surprise and this should also uh, apply to FreeCAD. Processing mesh is going to be exponential no matter how you slice it. doesn't matter if you're in Creo, SOLIDWORKS, CATIA, um, you know, FreeCAD, anything will have an exponential scale when processing a mesh. That means if I go to do a tight mesh in my analysis, uh, I'm going to take exponentially more processing. So if we can only specify a specific region to mesh, uh, we can save a whole lot of unnecessary processing power and still get the resolution we're looking for. This is particularly true for curved regions. So why don't we get started, uh, and I'm going to go do this from scratch so you can follow along if you prefer. In the Part Design Workbench on the uh, XY plane, I can make a uh, rectangle. I can add in, and uh, oh, my background makes things kind of invisible. So let me uh, change it from my preferences to display colors, color gradient, apply. And we'll use a symmetric constraint to make sure that we are centered here. And I'm going to use uh, Shift H for horizontal dimension. We're going to go three inches wide, Shift V for vertical, and Two inches tall, and uh, we're going to do that. Did not go to the center like I intended. We'll grab those two and uh, combine those points. Shift R for radius. How about a three-quarter inch radius? 0.75. Close. We'll pad uh, to one inch tall. So there is a model. I want to add a directional force like I've done uh, in the last video. This time I'll do it at an angle. Um, so it takes uh, three points to define a plane. So with our plane defined, I can sketch on this. And we'll do something like, in fact, I'll import this corner. And I'll do something like A for angle. We can establish an angle of something like 25 degrees. And I'll make this four inches. Close that. And I can hide my plane. So let's go back to the FEM workbench. And from here, I'll add in some basic constraints. Uh, we'll start a new analysis, and we'll run a G-Mesh. I'm going to simply apply a default mesh. Oh, and that did not seem to work. I forgot one thing. Uh, let's actually do this. I'm going to highlight my body, or my pad here, and now say G-Mesh. And now it's made a mesh. That's a, that's a lot better. We have a mesher error, unfortunately. I'm going to keep on going so you can see um, the rest without uh, any delay. Uh, so there's our standard mesh. But this is a curved surface, and meshing across the curved surface fundamentally means approximation. You need to approximate if it's a curved surface. So one of the options for meshes is I can, of course, say, let's say I want my mesh to be a maximum size of uh, 50 thou, and I can remesh this. <coughs> And you can see it's taking time to calculate this in FreeCAD, to calculate a 50 thou mesh. And that's, um, you know, just a lot more processing. And when I go to run the analysis, it's going to be a lot more analysis time. So we fi we're finally done. We have a small mesh. And uh, that's, you know, that's one way to do it. But that just took a long time. So what I'm going to do is highlight my pad, G mesh. We're going to mesh at a regular amount. And now, if I highlight my mesh here, I have the option for 
create a mesh region. So I can add a face and choose all the mesh on that face is going to be 50 thou in inches. Okay, so I've added this sort of sub mesh region. And if I show my mesh, nothing has changed, right? But now that I have this sub mesh region, I can double click and say apply. And now we're meshing at 50 thou on this face and a default mesh everywhere else. And you can see that the mesh uh, goes from small back to its default size uh, quite smoothly. This gives us more resolution where we care about having more resolution, but we've meshed much faster than, faster than last time, and uh, we have still a reasonable amount of computational power. It's a way that we can get the resolution we want without going up that exponential curve. Uh, I can finish this uh, study out. I'll hide this mesh and start adding a few things. Maybe I can add in uh, some fixed geometry here. And I'll add in a force acting on this face. Let's go with uh, let's go with that. And uh, we can make this 9,950 or some number like that. We'll specify a direction. And we'll add a reference to this face, and we can reverse it. All right. So that's our analysis thus far. In fact, you know what? Instead of this face, uh, let's do this this circular face here, I'm putting a face on where we have a lot of uh, definition. Now, I can specify material. I like calculate steel when doing uh, generic examples. Okay. And it looks like we're ready to run. So uh, I'll actually double click on Calculix. We'll write the IMP. And we'll run Calculix. All right, so we've got a result set. And you can see uh, if I do my absolute displacement, and I can hide this body we have a very high resolution of computation on our round face and our smooth flat faces that probably don't require as much uh, are computated in a little bit less. So does this bias anything? Are we better off with a uh, meshing a region than with a generic mesh? And if so, how much? Let's do a little bit of visual visualization with this. Um, so first off, I will... Uh, Let's take a look at some images that I've compiled. So if I use the pipeline visualization tool in FreeCAD, uh, there you can see uh, on the left without using regional mesh and just default mesh all the way through. And basically what we've made on the right, and you can download this file from my GrabCAD in the link in the description if you want to check it out further. Uh, we have much better definition, especially looking at stress uh, down here. Um, the stress appears to go much higher than with a higher resolution. Seems like you have a better approximation and scaling as well. So that's uh, strain. And if we take a look at uh, our result mesh, um, we have you know higher definition. This looks actually quite similar. But when you come down to stress, you can see we have a, a far different scale of stress. And you can see uh, what, what you'd think of as a large stress um, being dispersed across this face is really a stress concentration at this face, right? So having a higher uh, resolution on this face would be a great argument for adding a measure to disperse the stress like a fillet, whereas this, it appears the stress is going a lot more through the face. Um, and this is just what they look like displaced. Again, that looks quite similar between the two pictures. Uh, so you can get a lot better uh, visualization results through this. Uh, looks like I'm already past 10 minutes, so I'm going to call this a video. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.